Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna to take a look at the brand new Ohuhu set of 320 markers. Uh, this is supposed to be the final set, the largest set they're going to do with the alcohol markers. So if you've been waiting until all the colors came out to buy a set, then um, then here is the set. This is going for around $170 on Amazon. Uh, there's usually like a little coupon on there that takes a little bit of money off in case, um, you know, just because it's a new product. So um, you can take advantage of that. And they seem to be about the same price on their own website as well. And I'll link both down below if you want to explore. Um, there's tutorials and things like that on the Uhuhu website if you want to check that out. I write for their blog, full disclosure, they sent me these to review and for blog articles that I do on their um, on their website so I just wanted to keep that I just wanted to make you aware of that so you know that I do have a relationship with the company so in the box or in the bag you get a divided um, carrier it's got six slots or six kind of big bigger areas and I just kind of broke the colors up by like reds and yellows, browns, greens, blues, and grays as best as I could. Um, there's a lot of different grays in this set including red grays and green grays, uh, neutral grays, cool grays, warm grays, blue grays, green grays, all of that. Um, really just about any color you can imagine. You also get a brochure that gives you information about this and the other lines, uh, the other different types of markers they have. They have several alcohol marker lines. They have a brush marker line, which is really nice. They have actually um, the, the brush and chisel line of markers and they have a brush and bullet tip line of markers now. So, uh, which I think is nice for rubber stampers or an adult coloring book enthusiast where um, you want that expressive line of the brush, but you also want the really fine detail of a bullet tip. Um, I feel like they've really, I tried to fill every gap in the marker market that um, that they've seen. Uhuhu is probably the first company that came out with budget uh, alcohol markers because like before them, Spectrum Noir was like the cheapest alcohol markers you could find for artists. And other than that, you'd have to go and get like Sharpies or Bic Markets and just kind of like add lighter tones of Prismacolor or Copic to kind of fill it out. So it was really nice when Uhuhu came along because their classic markers like these have always ran around 50, 50 cents per marker. So you really can't beat it. Um, so I'll show you some of their, their uh, older set of 200 so you can compare. Uh, the numbering system has changed, but if you have the set of 200 markers already, they have a 120 set that will give you the colors that are in this set, but not in the 200 set. Um, so if you already have the 200 set, they recommend getting the 120, the new 120 set, so that you can just boost up to this set. Um, but like I said, they changed the numbering between there and here. Um, so that might be a little confusing. I can't figure out the numbering system. I did ask um, my contact at Ahuhu and she sent me a graphic that had, um, and I'll have, to, I'll have to look at my notes because it doesn't seem to correlate with these markers. So I don't know if, and I haven't seen that graphic on any of their um, listings. So maybe they've changed things. Maybe it, maybe it was uh, put out too soon. I don't know. But say if you have a marker like this and it says G364, the, for, the letters should be the color family, so G for green. Then the next two digits, three, six, should be saturation. Um, so like the, the brighter the number or the higher the number, the more vibrant the color, the lower the number, the more dull the color. And then they said the last digit, in this case four, should be brightness, which I think they mean value, like how light or how dark something is. But when I look at the swatches, I can't find a pattern that matches that. So, um, so I don't really know what um, what they were doing with the color numbering system. I haven't seen other markers that have this exact same coloring uh, numbers, so I don't know. Um, maybe they're just kind of coming out with a new with a new range of numbers so that it can't be directly matched by another brand. I don't know. They are saying that they're going to come out with refill inks and nibs and they have offered their more popular colors open stock on their website. Not Amazon, but if you go to uhuhu.com, um, they do have their more popular colors in the brush and the classics open stock, which is nice. Um, I love the refill inks, especially with such a great variety. I know I could like find something to match my more expensive markers, which would be great because I really find the ink to be just as blendable as Copic ink. So I, I had my husband swatch these out for me and I'll show you here just so you can see how they look. Um, here you can see a really beautiful selection of grays, beautiful selection of earth tones. It can be used for fur and skin and things like that. Um, 
these swatch cards came with them so you don't have to write it down or print it out and the nice thing about swatch cards that um, have all the colors is that you will know if you're missing one or if you have a duplicate which I did not have but if you do have that then they will replace the one that's missing or if you get a dry one they will replace it um, they have really good customer service which is why I think they are still around and they've offered so many different um, different options here we've got our yellow orangey reddish pink colors now um, I kept looking at the numbers because these numbers are going pretty much in numerical order and you'll notice that some of the colors that would blend nice with other colors kind of jump around a bit like that color I think would blend really well with that color like that one and that one um, I feel like you have to kind of jump around it would make more sense if they were numerically next to each other but um, yeah, especially since the the two digit and one digit number thing doesn't seem to correlate I'm thinking maybe it was supposed to be one digit then two digits I don't know um, but I even get a little confused with the Copic numbering system I just go by eyeball honestly I just go by my gut when I'm blending so I'm probably not the best um, marker expert as far as going by the numbers because to tell you the truth I if I have to keep looking at the tiny numbers on the ends of caps or looking at tiny numbers on my swatches I'll never get anything drawn I just gotta jump in and do it because that that rapid focus from a color chart to my painting is just uh, it's just tough once you're once you hit like your mid 40s your ability to, to switch focus that quickly is um, is deteriorated so enjoy your eyeballs kids <laughs> it does not last um, gorgeous selection of greens we got some more earth tones here uh, definitely any color that you could want like here's a good example of blue of like blending colors not being next to each other on the chart so if I had this color and want to blend it I would want to use like that color and maybe that color and they are not next to each other in order at all some of them are but it's almost like they had a set tone of colors and then they were adding different ones in and they had to find places for the numbers but it doesn't make sense because this is a new numbering system at least that's how it seems to me but I like that they give you swatch cards and you can just fill them out and keep them in your bag and you also get a um, a soft plastic page divider and you want to put that in between your your pages in your sketchbook so you don't bleed over to the next page it will it will bleed onto the back side of your markers I mean on your sketchbook paper but um, you don't want to like mess up the next page which I forget all the time and I mess up the next page and I have to try to figure out a way to integrate whatever smudge I have on my um, on my paper to be on the next one so um, I this is the first drawing I did with these markers they worked really well I found it really easy to layer really easy to get the color I wanted the caps are, are a good match um, I've had issues like the brush markers aren't quite as good of a match as these are these are a really nice match and I don't feel I didn't feel like I needed to swatch before I just started using them in fact all these were done before I asked Jason to swatch these for me so um, that's a really nice improvement and uh, this is another one I did it layered really well I was able to get that crinkly fabric texture just uh, really really nice to use I find that I use the chisel end more than the bullet tip end um, I usually do if it's not a brush marker I tend to use a chisel end more than the bullet end and it works it works great and you can see yes they do bleed to the back side so you'd want to have that um, you'd want to have that sleeve in there so that and it is smaller than a lot of sketchbooks so you might need to move it around so keep that in mind but um, you do want to have that in there so you don't you don't ink bleed onto the next page which is you know it happens with all markers it's not unique to a hoo hoo but just uh, just keep that in mind this one I did on marker paper which is a very thin paper you can see on the back um, see how translucent and thin the paper is and um, you definitely want to put that marker paper in. I, I don't think I did because I've got a little bit of red there but um, it worked really well this is great for mixed media for adding color pencil or pen on top works um, works just like any any good quality marker would work now let's take a look at the markers themselves I'll grab out this purple one so you have the word a hoo hoo in um, uh, silver writing in fact I'm gonna bring my pad here back and zoom in so you can see a little bit better I'll just move to a to this page since it's one that I've uh, uh, they've got a little mark on anyway oh and let's put our oh my god I do this sometimes and I like and I forget to put them in and make a smudge on the next page it's like okay now I gotta work that smudge in and it's like a never-ending cycle although it does inspire me to, to use the paper because I don't have just a, a plain white piece I have to integrate a smudge anyway um, so we've got the word a hoo hoo art marker in silver and an indication of the chisel tip and the bullet tip and the band 
is on the bullet tip side. So just keep that in mind. If you want the chisel tip, don't go for the band. If you want the bullet tip, go for the band. The marker case, even though it's a soft case, it is um, rigid enough because when it's packed with markers, you can store it on its side and I would recommend doing that. So I'd recommend just tipping the whole marker bag on its side so these store flat if you don't have a marker, um, like a marker rack to put these in. So here's what the, um, what the chisel end looks like. You know, you can move, use different sides of the marker to get the, to get the um, coverage that you want. I find the ink flow to be good, not too fast, not too slow. I can get a nice flat coverage really easily. And then the bullet tip is your typical bullet tip art marker. The quicker you go, you can get a little bit of a thinner line, but it's a pretty consistent line. You're not gonna get the finest line. You're not gonna get the, uh, the thickest line. You can go a little slower and get a thicker line, see? The slower you go, the more that ink will spread and you can get a thicker line. I think I can get a finer line with my chisel tip and I get a straighter line. So I tend to use my chisel tip for most of my, most of my drawings, unless I'm like stamping and I'm coloring in a small area. Now let's look at a similar one in the um, old style. I think this might be the same color. It looks pretty close. Oh, and um, for one coat, I find the markers match at one coat pretty well. And so this one, uh, we can see again, let's compare. The Ahuhu marker has got the silver writing. It's also got the indication for the bullet tip. And let's compare the bullet tips. They look pretty much the same. They feel pretty much the same. Boy, that is almost the same color. I don't know if it is or not, but boy, it looks awfully close, doesn't it? Um, and then let's look at the chisel tips. I've got to keep the caps, the caps, the markers separate because it could be very easy to, to, um, to misplace them. Um, exact same marker body. This one's a little bit redder. And let's do uh, just a flat fill. Yep, same ink flow. Um, I think the markers are identical. It's just the cap design has changed. Yeah, they feel they feel exactly the same. The chisel ends look the same. It's the same marker, just just different caps and different numbering systems. Um, so the one benefit to the new caps is that they post. So I can put my marker on the end there and hold that cap so I don't lose it. So if that's important to you, this is an improvement over the old one. Um, if it's, I honestly still have the habit of just setting my caps to the side because most of my markers don't post. Uh, like I really like uh, my Blick Studio and my Copic and my Art and Fly markers. They don't post, so I'm always just setting my cap aside. So because I'm out of the habit, I don't even take advantage of that um, ability that these have. So that would be uh, definitely a bonus though. And these, if you try to post these, there's just not enough. There's, there's not enough exposed cap to do that and it will just fall off. And I like that little cutaway wave in there. I think that's kind of pretty, but obviously that's just cosmetic. The markers are um, essentially the same, just different, just different numbering. And I can't remember on the old ones if I thought they matched their, um, if they matched their cap as well, but you know what? We can compare swatches from the 200 set and the and the 320 set. You can kind of see how they how they stock up, how they stack up, stock up, stack up. We'll see how how similar they are. Now this is before they put they gave us the swatch cards. So that's one um, one benefit is that they now give you the swatch cards. Of course, this is on marker paper, and this is on like the their hoo hoo card stock that they do the swatches on. Um, so it's not gonna be exactly identical, but we can get a good idea anyway. So let's take a look at reds. Now the old Ahuhu markers went on the Shinhan touch um, system of ink. So if you wanted to get refills for those, you could just buy the Shinhan inks. Um, I really hope they start selling refills at a, at a good price because Blick and Copic ink refills have gotten so expensive that um, it kind of makes them it not financially worthwhile. I mean, it is ecologically worthwhile to do it and convenience wise, but I mean, 
when it costs the price of 10 markers to buy a little refill bottle, it's really not very, um, not very economical in the budget markers anyway. So let's see, we've got our range of reds here. We can do it like that. We've got a range of reds here from the 200 set. And so it's really difficult to, to compare like this, but just to show you what we have in the 320 set. And then we go over to oranges, definitely a lot more oranges. I feel like the reds are probably pretty similar between the two sets. I feel like we've got a lot more oranges and uh, we've got the skin tones. I mean, the 200 set is pretty darn comprehensive. So, I mean, if you have the 200 set, do you want that extra 120? That's, that's totally up to you. Um, there's a lot of pastels in that 200 set. So I don't even feel like you're lacking pastels really. Now let's take a look through the blues. We've got, um, we still have quite a few blues. Okay, so we definitely have more blues here than we do in the old one. But that's one thing, I do think they really um, added more blues and purples, which is nice because blues and purples are difficult to blend. So having that extra, like having all these extra blues and purples is gonna help you with the blend because man, it seems like with a blue or a purple, you gotta be real close to the, you know, adjacent color to get a smooth blend. So that's nice. Um, greens. Yeah, we've got quite a few more greens here, but I always thought their selection of greens was pretty good before. Greens blend easier. Yellows blend easier. I don't know why, but um, so I, I don't feel like I need as many as I do for other colors. Oh, and when my husband swatched these, he did one, one swipe of the color. Then on the second half of the um, the swatch, he put another layer just so you can kind of see um, you know, uh, two layers of color, see how different it is. It gets a little bit deeper and more even the more color you lay down. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, so if you do want a color that's in between, you can just give two coats of the lighter color. Um, let's see, let's look at our neutrals. I feel like the 200, oh no, we've got more neutrals here. I'm like, did the 200 set have more neutrals? I think it's pretty similar between those two sets. For grays though, I well, gosh, a 200 set has a lot of grays too. I guess they kind of just went across the board and added more stuff. Um, oh, I wanna look at those. There's the pastel purples in there. Looks pretty, pretty similar. And even in the 200 sets, there were some colors that are so close together. They're almost like, well, probably didn't need 173 and 174. You know, they're pretty similar. Um, so it just, it just really depends on what you want. Um, you don't need this many markers, but if you're doing the chisel and bullet tip markers, it is easier to blend if you have a bigger variety of color. Whereas with a brush tip, you can kind of press more and get a, like more ink to release and like lift and get less ink. So you can kind of get a blend just with one marker a little bit better that way. But um, you know, it's all in what you like and what you're used to. I think that these are a great buy for the money. And um, if you've liked the Ahuhu Classic markers through the years, you're gonna like these. These are the same, it's the same marker that they've been putting out since their first iteration when they did, um, I don't know if you remember those, the first Ahuhu markers that came out was probably like 2016 and they were the uh, square, actually, you know what? I think I, oh, I have some, let me show you. Um, this is what the original Uhuhu markers would be when you'd order them. They actually said touch new on them and you can see those all over Amazon. And um, they were pretty decent. They had the same numbering system as the classic Uhuhu num uh, markers because they were the, um, they were like the, uh, you know, the Shinhan markering system. They had the body, it's kind of squoval size, kind of like a squarish oval, like the Copics, like, like what they have here, but their caps were a little bit more squared. But um, yeah, very similar quality. I find that the, I found when they went to the more oval caps, the markers got juicier. I just think maybe it's the, um, maybe the caps were tighter and they didn't let air in. I think that might be the difference because I found that the ones that had the Touch New branding would wanna dry out on me. But it also could be, cause I gave away my first set to a friend of mine because once they went with the new, the new style, um, I figured, well, I'm, I'll show the new style one rather than the old style. So I gave that to a friend. And um, so I don't know if any of those have dried out, but I found with the skin tone set, which I did keep, um, that they t kind of dried out a little quicker. However, with lighter tones, your pastel markers dry up faster because of the higher percentage of alcohol. And if you haven't used it up and they've just dried up, you can actually just put in some blending medium or denatured alcohol uh, or something like that. Just some really high percentage ethanol or alcohol to um, re-moisten them. But 
they're a nice blending ink. I think they have a little bit of glycerin in them too to help the marker slide and blend really well. Cause I've noticed that like most markers blend very similarly. The ones that I've had the most trouble with getting a good blend, but they were the first like more affordable markers to come out. So I gave them, I cut them some slack were the Spectrum Noir markers. And I think what it is, cause they feel a little squeaky and the tips kind of feel a little harder than these markers. I think what it is though, is that there's not any lubricant in those markers. And I think a lot of these other brands have a little glycerin in there to make the marker glide. And I don't think, and to keep the ink wet a little bit longer. And I don't think the Spectrum Noir does. So that's what I think the big difference is between those. But essentially your alcohol markers are all going to be the same, same kind of ink. It's just what size barrel do you like? How big are your hands? Do you prefer a, a smaller barrel? Do you prefer a larger barrel? Do you prefer triangular? Do you prefer a square, round, oval? Um, I mean, that's where, what it comes down to and what kind of nibs do you like? So if you have markers you like already and you've got enough colors, then look no further. You're all set. But if you are looking for a good range of colors, maybe you're looking for a, um, like a real extra awesome Christmas present for somebody that's really into art. This would definitely fit the bill. I can, um, I can't even imagine being a teenager and getting this for Christmas. I would be over the moon. That would be, that would be so exciting to me. Um, but keep in mind, they also have a brush version and these run around 50 cents a marker. Their brush version runs around, I think around 80 cents a marker. So, um, you know, that's quite affordable and their brushes aren't bad and they're reversible. So, um, if you are going to get for somebody, get a gift for somebody, I would try to ascertain whether they want that brush marker or they want the chisel marker because, um, the brush markers are, are probably a little more popular and sought after right now. That said, I can go either way. I like chisel markers just fine. Um, brush markers are easier to use though. They have, they have less of a steep learning curve. So if you're new, brush marker is going to be easier than the chisel markers here. So I hope you found this useful. I'll put all the links down below so you can check it out. Um, I believe there is color charts on Amazon and on ahuhu.com. So you can have a look at those and see what sets you think would benefit what you already have. Like if you already have a bunch of really bright colored markers, this probably is not going to make the most sense. Either of these sets aren't going to make the most sense. You could get a set of pastel tones. They have them both in this, in the, um, they have a set of pastel tones in this style of marker and in the brush marker. You can uh, get earth tones. You can get, um, they now have a muted set section. Just keep in mind that, um, some of those sec, some of those, um, those sets are repeated in their larger size sets. So you just want to make sure you're not, if you're going to buy a couple sets, you want to make sure you're not just buying a bunch of duplicates, unless you want a bunch of duplicates, but just kind of keep that in mind. But they do have pretty good swatches on all their listings. So you can compare and see what you think would be best for you. This is lovely. This is gorgeous. Um, I've enjoyed using them. It could be a bit overkill, but, um, but that just depends on what you like. The other thing that I kind of like about this is that the, let's compare this with a, with a Copic because the Copic markers have, there's a lot of different um, storage solutions you can get for Copic markers because they're so popular. And I think that these will fit your Copics. If you have like the, some people have those, um, those Copic, uh, what are they called? They're like a, um, I think it's like a insert. I think you can buy them on Etsy or maybe even Copic sells them, but they fit on those Rascog carts. So you can like put all your markers in. Now I don't like to have my markers standing up, but if you wanted to, they would sit in the, um, they'll sit in a Rascog like that. And I'm just wondering if these would, if those seem to be close enough in size. Now the Copic body seems to be more of a squoval and the, uh, the Uhuhu body seems to be more of a uh, regular oval. So I can just show you the, the, um, I can show you those two side by side just so you can have a, a gander. Very similar, but hmm, I'm just trying to see. I can't tell. Is the I gotta eyeball, I gotta get down, get down on its level. Uh, you know, it seems like the who ones are just like maybe like a mill, not even a millimeter, just a, just a hair fatter than the Copics. So I don't know if that would fit the um I don't know if it would fit one of those Copic holders that go in like a Rascog, but uh, something to consider. We can compare those chisel nibs. A Copic chisel nib is smaller than the, um, is, is skinnier. Let's just do a quick little swatchy swatch. Actually, why do I have pink? Let me grab a color that's a little bit darker. It'll show up. That's not very helpful. Let's try, let's try this one. I should use my Copics more. I really should. I, I like them. They're wonderful markers. I just, I'm just annoyed at their whole, uh, 
the price. <laughs> the price of the refills. It's really ticked me off. Um, anyway, so let's just see. So Copic, obviously, this is a sketch. It's got the lovely brush nib that are wonderful. But let's just see their chisel. So their chisel, it's a little bit skinnier, but I mean, it's not that much skinnier. I can't get quite as fine of a line, but I've had these Copics for a long time, so I've probably just worn out the chisel a little bit. Um, but it's not really that big of a deal because I have the brush, so I, with the Copics, I tend to use the brush more. So, you know, that means that these, the chisel nibs from Copic would not fit in the chisel section of the Ahuhu if you wanted to swap them, but you know what? I kind of wonder if the brush nibs might. I, I feel like the Copic brush would be a little too small to fit in the to fit in the um, the Ahuhu body. But you know, for that matter, if you were gonna, if you wanted a brush marker, you'd save a lot of money just by going for the uh, going for their brush markers because brush tip refills are expensive. So you might as well just get the marker that's got the brush tips in them because for eighty cents. You're not going to buy a nib for 80 cents. For at cheapest, a Copic nib replacement nib is about, you know, 225, 250 a pop. So, yeah, that would be much more affordable. But they're all good markers, and uh, you know, do what your budget allows, do what is going to suit your style best, and um, and enjoy the supplies you have. You should never feel inadequate because you're going with a less expensive brand if it meets your needs. You should never feel ad inadequate if you already have supplies you love. You shouldn't feel like you have to go and buy the greatest and the latest and greatest because there's, you know, 50 more colors or 120 more colors. I mean, if you want to, great, but if you don't, use what you have and love it because you bought it, you paid for it, you deserve to enjoy it. Anyway, that's the end of this review. Um, I will link everything I mentioned in the comments below and I hope you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.